All right, we got Mr. It's Kish back. I should be subscribed to him. Go check out his videos if you haven't. We've reacted to a couple of videos. You know, I enjoy his takes. They make me think. My, I guess my brain's use is going. Blue lock is trash, dot, dot, dot. But, okay, let me guess. He's going to farm how shitty it is, which is true. But I do feel a sense of entertainment and hype. Even though it's PowerPoint movements, it's stupid hype still due to the nature of the story and the art looking good. And the community memes stemming from the shitty, you know, season is actually one of the most peak moments too. So let's see what he has to say. Blue Lock has gone from this. Oh Screw this. Everyone in their. In no way, bro. Just put in KSI song there. Mother shitting on it. I have something I must admit to you guys. And please, please don't get too mad. Please don't freak out. But I actually don't think it's that bad. Okay. I know, I know, I'm sorry, but look, I still think despite the fact that it looks like a colored manga animated in PowerPoint by a 12-year-old kid yep. who just discovered what the internet is, I think there's some redeeming factors here. But Such as? I blast you guys with a copium nuke, let me beautifully explain to you why everyone is so, so upset. Like, Jesus Christ. Donald Trump, please, save anime. You're the president of the world now. Yep, let's go USA, USA. Please make anime great again. Upset, like Jesus Christ. The way people are acting about Blue Lock, it's as if you decide to take the most popular manga of all time and give it the Queen Bee treatment. But we'll break down that. Yo, Queen Bee. <laughs> you know that they make other type of anime too, right? I'm not sure if it's the same name, but I do know of a studio called Queen Bee treatment but we'll break down that even with this animation it's still pretty impressive we actually got this but first let's roll it back to 2022 when blue lock first came out let's being go a soccer anime during the time of the world cup when japan was having a miracle run and scoring literal anime goals with that's right historical context when blue lock was airing at this time there was the world cup happening and japan was popping off twitter was going crazy with the blue lock references People are making Blue Lock, you know, team pictures, but with anime ca main characters instead, right? Things were so, so just good. And not only that, I think it's also important to note that the studio working on Desape Studios only had two projects that they were working on back in 2022. So obviously, there's a lot of fan trends going on. The studio is also able to work on the project, um, focus on one product at a time, rather than how many different fucking animes they're picking up currently right now. Uniforms drawn by the mangaka, it was a recipe for a lot of hype. And yep. I mean a lot of hype. They basically had an Mbappe clone in the show. True. And even more hybrid Blue Lock soccer edits than you can possibly wrap your head around. But it was more than just a World Cup that made Blue Lock what it is today. It was the fact that Blue Lock was one of the most revolutionary sports anime to ever come out. You see, sports anime has been filled with the power of teamwork, the power of friendship, the power of love while mixing in things like school drama or... Yeah, I'm tired of that shit, bro. So tired of power of friendship. We need to work together, guys. Think about each other. No, fuck that. I loved the complete opposite perspective of worry about yourself. Be the most egotistical egoist you can because that's what we're lacking in Japan. If we want to have an A striker that can, you know, transcend the world stage, we need motherfuckers to become sociopaths like in Classroom of the Elite. For teaching teamwork, there's always been themes of positivity and self-discovery and the slice of life aspects of the show are what elevate normal sports anime because they teach characters to be good people and that will in turn make them better teammates and then they will win whatever spring tournament they're in. Nah, fuck you. If you're good enough, you'll win by yourself. I love that mindset, even if it's not practical. And Blue Lock just said, fuck all that. We're throwing hundreds of kids into this facility and they're all gonna go at it and eliminate each other in order to determine who is the best striker there. And teammates? Teammates. Fuck them. Screw all that. All That's right. We're competing against our teammates, bro. Shido and Rin are literally fighting each other to get the possession of the ball to score. We're not even thinking about the other team, bro. We're fighting amongst themselves. You need is yourself and your ego. Pushing a message that all teammates I love will it. do is get in your way. This is killer B kill. The main character Isagi literally betrayed his friend in the first episode. Kunigami. Was he a friend? He was hyped up. And I thought that this dude was like so important for the story. But was he a friend? I forget episode one. It's such a long time ago. But it was a shock that he got like just... He's the one to get eliminated immediately, not Temple Monk, this guy. In the first episode, Kunigami is one of the most honest characters in the show. So they got his ass out of there. But oh. You know, I was thinking about the wasted potential of Kunigami and maybe it's not wasted because who knows, maybe he's having his villain arc, right? Maybe there's a redemption for him in a, in a weird way. 
but his entire thing was being a superhero. And I thought that, you know, like Ichigo Kurosaki took a time, you know, off of Bleach and showed it to Blue Lock to show what he had. But Shido replaces him. And if you think about the whole, you know, just like his superhero mindset just being good, is that, re is that the reason why he just, you know, got capped? His ass out of there. Bachiro, who's obsessed with Isagi beyond belief. Literally, he is number one fan, and the two of them go at it. Ryo and Nagi are literally dating, and he dumped his ass to go win because he's not trying to be left behind. And we'll get into True. Absolutely true, brother. Yaoi Lock. BL. Boys love. Rio and Nagi more later, but season two nailed their dynamic once again. And look, Blue Lock doesn't care about your feelings. Blue Lock doesn't care about making you a better person. Blue Lock only cares about winning. And what really tied it all together was the fact that the animation in our style was so badass. Players mm -hmm. felt like monsters. Crazy plays actually looked incredible. And the atmosphere of the show really attracted people, considering the fact that every other sports anime has this slice of lifestyle. Immediately upon watching Blue Lock, you're like, yeah. This is different. It looks bold, saturated. I love it. That's why even in season two right now, because the art looks so good, just pause any episode. And you probably can't, you, if you pause any episode of Blue Lock, and, sh and maybe not any episode, maybe there's some derpy frames in there, but for the most part, the art is so stunning. If you showed people just one frame of season two, people will be like, damn, this looks good. I want to check it out. But the problem is when it starts to actually start to move. And the problem is, it's not moving. And in Blue Lock season two, it's been uh, how should I put it? I don't know, no, not if I know I sound just cold. He got me my whole fucking flow. So before you're like, what? Is Are we? Is, is this the big three of shitty animation, anime, uh, uh, adapted animes? Seven Deadly Frames is the memes that people you know make, right? Considering the last season, I think. Not the spin-off shows, but like the final season of Seven Deadly Sins. And Boruto, I thought it was like a pretty good anime in terms of like how it looks, but I guess they have some crazy shitty animation going on in Boruto too, huh? Flow! So before you're like, what a shit studio, stupid animators, how could they screw this up on the biggest stage in the world? And the answer is basically the fact that they were rushed like crazy because Blue Lock was the highest selling manga of last year. They wanted to capitalize on that hype. But with that yep. being said, why do I think it's not that bad? Am I just a fool? Am I just an idiot, a buffoon, a bozo for hire? And while those statements are true, the answer is, I just really, really fuck with the concept. And if you- Me too, right? Even if the anime, the animation is garbage, it's still so fun to watch. And due to the nature of the whole competitive egotistical act and hype goals, and even if the goals don't look good, it's just the story is so hype that even with shitty animations, it's still so fun to watch. If you also feel like a buffoon for enjoying my stupid videos, please leave a like and subscribe. Otherwise, I will personally animate Blue Lock Season 3. So what is the main concept of Blue Lock Season 2? At this point, we've weeded out a lot of the competition and pretty much everyone remaining is a good player with actual value. And now we have to get rid of even more players. So in the Blue Lock facility, they need to get down to 11 players in order for them to play a game against the current Japan Under-20 squad. And if they lose the game against the Under-20 squad, all Blue of the is Blue done. Lock players' careers will be over. So how do they weed them out? How do they figure out who's the best striker there and the solution is 3v3s they will sorry 5v5s play matches against each other and the losers will be eliminated now this may seem boneheadedly simple because it kind of is and there is a little bit more to it but a lot of the concept of blue lock itself just doesn't make too much sense because they're all trying to work to be the best striker but they're practicing against other strikers which is kind of dumb because in a and like if you think about the the goalie aspect i think is the biggest plot hole of blue lock i like everyone's playing striker that's fine and even in the most recent episode Ego kind of told us a strategy that does utilize a situation where everyone could be strikers, defenders, midfield, and, you know, forward and so on. But what about the fucking goalie? <laughs> Gakamoto ain't do shit to practice for goalie. He going into the final turn at U20 right now and telling the other U20 goalie, like, hey, bro, this is my first time. Can you give me some tips? <laughs> and, like, the entire, like, 5v5s too, it's not as if a striker is even playing goalie, right? You have AI robot goalies. I, I think that's, like, a pretty funny loophole. Which probably doesn't really matter, because I'm like, I don't really care. I, it's still so hyped to me. In a real game, they'll be playing against real defenders, which when you think about it, if you're going to save Japanese soccer, you know, maybe there should be a yellow lock for defenders or a red <laughs> lock for goalies and so on. You know what? That's a decent idea. Dude, a camp, a lock for every single position? Yeah. But uh, who cares? It's anime and this is so sick. <laughs> 
Now, while that may be a cool concept and the animation is sick, those aren't the only reasons that makes Blue Lock so unique to the sports anime genre, but it's the fact that every character is depth that you really have only seen in the likes of Haiku and Kuriko. Nagi was once a lazy gamer who just happened to be talented at soccer until realizing he does want to lazy be part genius. of the crop. Bachira is someone that was lonely and lost and felt that the Bro, uh, bro had a fucking imaginary friend. <laughs> I still can't believe there was an entire arc of Bachira getting over his imaginary friend. Soccer field was the only place he was understood. Rin, whilst being this Gojo-esque character, has to deal with the fact that he is nothing compared to his older brother. And Isagi, the main character who has been mediocre his whole life, is trying his best to become the king of a jungle filled with monsters. So despite the fact that the animation looks terrible, there's so much characters that I care about and storylines mm -hmm. to follow that are interesting. And we'll jump more into it later, but season 2 upped the ante so much that it's hard to not be invested. Especially That's right, the stakes are as high as possible right now. In terms of everything we've seen in Blue Lock, we're getting this hype U20 match. Not only that, there's like brotherly sibling ship going on between Sai and Rin, right? And Sai is like showing up to the U20 team and just like shitting on every one of them. Bring Shiro on board too, just like a Salster main striker. Everything is just popping off in Blue Lock. Again, the story, due to the nature of hype it already is, it just carries the production value of what we're seeing in the anime of season 2. Especially with the stage of the show and that at any moment one of these guys can just be gone but i hear it i can sense it my current senses are tingling uh hey bozo if you like the character so much why don't you just read the manga the anime is literally just a manga colored you fucking stupid idiot well you see you do have a point but is a colored manga really a bad thing like i get it i get it right it wasn't exactly the colored manga stuff, it's just a meme. What we wanted, but there's still some sick frames in the episode, as well as the fact that you got the sound effects in the music, there's aspects of an anime that just can't be replicated in manga form, especially for sports anime. Although these pages for frames don't compare at all, and the manga exceeds it in every which way. Yeah, the manga again, like look at that. Look at the art here. And this is season one content, I think, right? I'm not really sure actually, maybe this is season 2, but like the art is just so different. But just trying to follow what's going on, the anime is still an immersive enough experience that I'm willing to persevere through it due to my investment in the series as is. And people that, my friend, is called Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> we're too deep into... We're too deep into the sauce, bro. Also, I just realized I've been watching the video in the wrong format the entire time. Why did you guys tell me that the layout was fucked up? We're almost done with the video, and not a single person has told me that the layout was wrong. <sighs> Hopefully you guys didn't miss too much, you know, <laughs> of the part, but hey, you watch these videos to listen to my words, not look at what's going on the screen, right? People are acting like this season hasn't had any highlights, as the inclusion of Shindu has landed for me. This guy is literally the Toji of the Blue Lock universe. What Rin as Gojo, the dynamic of these two on the same team is sick. I Rin love it. does everything perfect. He does things with class and speed with the elitist mentality, and Shido is like, fuck all that. Give me the mm -hmm. ball and I'll score. And he literally scored a goal that happened in a... Yeah, and this actually happened. Haaland, right? Holland, he scored like this recently. Real game. Not only that. This exact one. And I'm not sure which happened first. I'm pretty sure Holland did this shit after the episode aired. Or at least I saw the shit on TikTok after it aired. I don't know what the fuck this match was really happening. But we're seeing Isagi have two other teammates that are not dickheads. For Blue Lock, the demon time of anime, to introduce two characters. Yeah, and guess what happened to these characters that weren't dickheads? Nasa and Hiyori didn't make it onto the team. Now, they are, I think, part of the sub lineup, right? So maybe they have some time to play on the, you know, the actual match, but like, <laughs> they, they didn't make it on, bro. Characters that are actually real humans, they even call him bro. Their dynamic and how they play off Isagi elevated the vibe of the series and was actually such an interesting it was nice. curveball because everyone else has been a straight killer to this point. And that's before we- I would argue that Shido is relatively chill. Now, you're gonna call me crazy. What do you mean chill? He literally assaulted, you know, U20's best striker. He's like beating the shit out of Rin. Yeah, I, I acknowledge that, right? He can go crazy sometimes, but I thought that he'd be an asshole to other people and be condescending and rude. But like, and, and don't forget, Rin threw the punch first against Shido. Shido, when talking to other people, he doesn't really like look down on them from what I've seen in season two. He just has fun. If, he, if someone does some crazy shit, he'll just vibe with it. He's just chaos, and he's just doing what he wants. And of course, when someone starts beef, then he crashes out. He, he absolutely crashes out. But he's a lot more reasonable than I expected he would be based on his design at the end of Season 1. 
before you even get to the part where Isagi activates his Sharingan, this dude ma mapped out the entire field in his head, and he said, nah, I'm gonna just use my Mangekyo and score this goal myself. Or what about Ryo, realizing he's a bum and doing something useful for once, instead of just being carried by Nagi his whole life, and even True. the backstory we got on Ryo was like, damn! Why this shit low-key got hands? Ryo being someone who comes from a super elite family with a billionaire, all of a sudden wanting to leave the business that was going to be handed to him to go play soccer. To be honest, when he was introduced... I respect that, right? A lot of people are probably like, Nepo Kid, must be nice to be born with a fucking golden spoon in your mouth. But he said, fuck all that shit and started to play soccer. I think that Ryo is looking better and better as the, you know, the series continues. I truly thought that he'd be just like a character that would be forgotten. Right, gets cucked and then is forgotten, but it's looking like uh, he is going to make a comeback very, very soon too, maybe. I really thought he was going to be like Deku. You know, someone that wasn't good at anything. Someone that has to hide behind others. So when did this happen? <laughs> Deku and Rem. <laughs> Yo, don't tell Subaru this. Would Subaru care, actually? Probably not. <laughs> One that got fired as a hero to go work at McDonald's, then got fired from there, so now he has to go work at Domino's, you know. All these promotional campaigns of Deku and these, like, minimum wage jobs is not a good look. They meme him so hard. They meme this character so hard. Bro, I saw that one meme where he's like, uh, it's like All Might, you know, it's like a, I think it's supposed to be like a key frame in a manga where Deku's on the ground and, like, you know, crying on all fours. And All Might is looking back and it's like a sunset happening. And he's like, you too can, you know, work a minimum wage job. And then the next frame is Deku activating his powers. And it's just like, uh, putting fries in the bag 200%. Someone like a bum like that. But not. Nah, he may be kind of ass at soccer due to his lack of experience. By the way, there is nothing wrong with working at these jobs, bro. Everyone has to start at some place. My first job was newspaper boy and then McDonald's. I think it's so cringe for, you know, people to shit on like, you know, Minimum wage workers and stuff like that. It's just like, bro, people are just fucking make it by. They're just trying to survive. Going like a bum like that. But not. Nah, he may be kind of ass at soccer due to his lack of experience, but he is talented and at least he's not trying to be a freeloader. Don't get me wrong. I understand how much. Get, get Maru. I think that he will probably have a moment like this where he saves a goal. 100% he's going to do a scorpion kick save, right? Wrong. I understand how much. I also expect him to score a goal. I expect him to save a goal with a scorpion kick, but I also expect him to actually just start running up the field. There's probably going to be one crazy moment where Gagamura just says, fuck the goalie. I, I'm going in. Wrong. I understand how much animation can affect your perception on things. Look at Attack on Titan, for example. Most people hated the manga ending, but when you throw in the music, the animation, the production, it was a lot better. But I still don't know why they turned Eren into a bird. But even Blue Lock Season 1, those seasons with Bachira and him accepting his inner monster and playing alongside it, which allowed him to- Get some therapy. You need help. Is the imaginary friend in the room with us right now? To level up, those scenes would not have hit remotely the same if the animation quality wasn't there. Or even when Isagi leveled up and pushed past his own limits, none of those scenes would have hit the same had the animation not been up to par. And I know season 2 of Blue Lock is seemingly trying with a lot of these effects, and we said some of the still frames do look genuinely cool. And <sighs> if you stop the frame, yeah, it, it kind of looks cool, but... If you let it play, it just looks like a cap cut animation, bro. I think anything with this art style is going to look decent, and it may yeah. not be what we all wanted, but you shouldn't let the internet be the deciding factor in whether you like the show or not. Because Absolutely, right? At the end of the day, all we're doing is fucking yapping. Everyone has different opinions, and you should come with your own opinion after collecting data from other places, right? Don't just like blindly just like accept a school of thought just because it sounds good. Like think about what you're listening to and try to figure out like, does the logic make sense? Does this align with my beliefs, right? Just think about it like that. Because there's plenty of shows out there that don't have the greatest- <laughs> Failure frame. Which is the funniest title because this anime is a failed frame over and over and over again. Production value that can still be appreciated. And with the amount of people crapping on the show, it causes you to go in with really low expectations. And honestly, I was surprised what, what came out of it. Yeah. If you keep shitting on the show, you're going to have lower expectations. And then when you watch it, you're going to realize, huh, that ain't so bad. Because your expectations are low. And it's the same thing here where I think that we're becoming more delusioned as we keep watching Blue Lock. And I think that there is a psychology aspect to this where we're conditioned by 
getting so much mid, 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 mid. By the time something starts moving and things are kind of average, we think it's peak. Simply because of what we've been anchored to. Simply because, literally, we've been gaslit by the animation quality. Exactly, right? We've seen so much shit that something average relative to the shit we've been served looks peak. Maybe this is the end game. Just a mass fucking... <laughs> just, just brain, just hypnosis, just propaganda happening. And I know the main theory is that they all are putting their time towards the actual blue lock versus U20 game, which would make sense. But even if they didn't, I still think there's something here for you to enjoy. And at the very least, laugh at the show and have a good time. So if you enjoyed this video, check out the most underrated anime of fall 2024. Mm, I might check that out, but that was a great video. I think that uh, rather than doing some hate of blue lock, we're going to glaze it a little bit. And I do agree, right? Let's, let's not get it twisted. Of course, it's a tragedy with what's happening due to corporate greed and the production committee is just giving an unfair schedule and resources and talent to 8-Bit Studios to animate this shit. The animator's not at fault. It sucks that... Wait, did he actually say that? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Is this a Gohan moment in Dragon Ball? <laughs> you retard. Anyways, it is sad, right? It's sad that this is a state of blue lock, but with that being acknowledged, I, or I genuinely look forward to reacting to blue lock. Partly because it's a train wreck and it's also fun to just watch a train wreck happen. But the other side is, it is genuinely hype. Even if the sh animation is garbage due to the art and the overall story, it's just still so hype for me to watch. Please go check out Mr. It's Kiss channel. Give the video a like if you did. Here's a link. And I will see you guys next time.